Hey y'all, don't forget to hit those buttons over there. So I had brought up Lucy Stone and how I came to know her. And it was through this book, The Originals by Adam Grant, How Nonconformists Move the World. Real quick, he said, this may not be real quick, but he says, memories of her greatness have faded, but no one did more for women's suffrage in America than Lucy Stone. In 1855, she took a stand for women's right that moved thousands to follow in her footsteps, calling themselves Lucy Stoners in homage. She was the first woman in America to keep her own name after getting married. It was one of her many first. She was the first woman from Massachusetts to earn a bachelor's degree. She was the first American to become a full-time lecturer for women's rights, mobilizing countless supporters and converting numerous adversaries to join the movement. She became one of the only she became one of only a handful of women who spoke in public at all, let alone on women's rights. She led national conventions, and she launched the country's foremost women's newspaper, the Women's Journal, which ran for half a century. I told y'all that Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Canton Stanton followed her. They looked up to her. What happened, okay, was... talks. This book talks about... Okay, it's talk. We're going to talk about some horizontal hostility. Um, it said, we assume that common goals bind together groups, but in reality, they can often drive groups apart. Even though they share a fundamental objective, radical groups often disparage more mainstream groups as imposters and sellouts. Here's what happened. It was this kind of horizontal hostility that caused Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cat Caddy Stanton to split off from Lucy Stone, which they eventually wrote her out of history. Okay. Um, <sighs> Anthony and Stone partnered with a known racist, George Francis Train, who supported women's suffrage because he believed women could help to curtail the political influence of African Americans. Stone was outraged to see them campaigning with Train and allowing him to bankroll their efforts. The fault line only grew wider when Anthony and Stanton opposed the 15th Amendment proposal to grant African American men the right to vote. They drew a hard line. If women weren't given the right to vote, other minority groups shouldn't be allowed it either. Their position was radical not only because it was inflexible, but also because they were trying to reach liberal constituents who favored the amendment. Stone was more sympathetic to the ab so they were seen as the extremists. And she was seen as the mainstream one. Even though she was the aboli even though she was the abolitionist. As well as speaking on women's rights. She was the mainstream one. So here we talk about the horizontal hostility where they were going separate like they got radical, they um were backed by the racist. Okay, not wanting that, right? Um, anyways, uh, Stone was an abolitionist. And um, they tried to reconnect with her later. Uh, she says um, she recognized that common goals weren't sufficient for a coalition to prosper, noting people will differ as to what they consider the best, best methods and means. Stanton, for her part, pointed, no, no, I'm not going to go into all that. I just know that she stood firm behind um, not with them. And when she died, she said, um, man, I wanted to find that. Okay, I'm taking too long. Uh, but on her deathbed, she said, told her daughter to leave the world more, be make the world better, make the world better, make the world better. Real quick, I want to go to Susan B. Anthony's Wikipedia again and talked about her collecting anti-slavery petitions, but don't forget, don't forget. Mm, talking about some whitewash history. Don't forget to hit those buttons over there while you're listening in a world full of Susan B. Anthony's B.A. Lucy Stoner. Did I already say? I hope your day doesn't suck. Okay, love y'all. Bye.